Traveling back in time now? Hmm, this used to be hard. We fly past the Middle Ages, the first human civilization, the ancient ancestors of the first humans, the dinosaurs, the first land animals, the ancient sea creatures, and so on to the very beginning of all time. And there it is! This nebula is our solar system. Right now, it's just a cloud of multicolored dust made of hydrogen and helium spinning around. This cloud has begun to shrink and become denser. There's a theory that there were supernova explosions near our nebula. Their shockwaves squeezed the nebula from different sides until the center of the cloud became too heavy. The enormous weight presses it, and nuclear chain reactions begin at the very center of this cloud. It heats the cloud and makes it glow. Soon, it forms into a dense sphere, and that's how our sun is born. It happened about 4.5 billion years ago. Our planet doesn't exist yet. There's only a disk of dust and space debris orbiting the young sun. These pieces of debris are fusing gradually and getting heavier and heavier. Let's look at the very center of this pile of asteroids. The total weight of the debris compresses the central region so much that a dense metallic core is forming there. The enormous pressure heats the core, and the temperature at the center of the young Earth reaches nearly 10,800 degrees. And there's a liquid core around the solid one. It creates the magnetic field of our planet. Now, when radiation from the sun and the solar wind reaches Earth, it smashes into a shield in the form of our magnetic field. So far, our planet is burning and looks more like a ball of lava. But it begins to cool down, forming a solid crust. At this point, another protoplanet appears on the horizon. It looks more like an asteroid the size of Mars. And this massive piece of debris flies towards us. It hits the young Earth at such an angle that it knocks a part of our planet outward. The debris itself breaks into several pieces and stops in our orbit. After a while, all of this debris comes together to form the Moon. As a result of this collision, the Earth began rotating too fast. A day now lasts about 5 hours, instead of the usual 24. But the Moon is heavy enough to slow our planet's rotation with gravity. Now, the Earth doesn't look like a hospitable place. The gravitational forces of the Moon are penetrating deep into the Earth and causing more volcanic activity. Also, meteorites are constantly falling here, causing frequent explosions on the surface. Ow! The gas that comes out of the volcanoes forms our atmosphere. The ice that was brought to our planet on meteorites evaporates. The vapor rises and turns into rain. This rainwater falls to the surface, cooling the hot lava and forming the first lakes and rivers. For several hundred million more years, Earth resembles the surface of Venus. It's a lifeless place with a bunch of volcanoes, acid rains, and no oxygen to breathe. The sun wasn't as bright as it is now. Plus, the sun's rays could barely pass through tons of volcanic dust in the atmosphere. But about 3.5 billion years ago, the first life appears here in the form of single-celled organisms that didn't need oxygen. They appeared in the shallow, warm parts of the ocean near the shore. These bacteria reigned on Earth for nearly 2 billion years throughout the Archean Eon. They left stromatolites. These are stone pillars at the bottom of shallow, warm water. They're the product of simple organisms and bacteria. These bacteria evolved until they learned photosynthesis. Bacteria began to produce oxygen by absorbing the energy of sunlight. At first, this oxygen was spent on oxidizing rocks, but then excess oxygen began to fill the atmosphere. Plus, at this time, the first algae appeared, which also produced oxygen. This event is called the Great Oxidation Event, good name, which caused almost all living organisms to disappear from the face of the Earth. For simple organisms, oxygen was toxic, and the remains of bacteria and microorganisms sank to the bottom of the ocean. Many millions of years later, these remains will be recycled, and under the tremendous pressure of water and the Earth's crust, they will turn into oil. The Archean Eon ended with this catastrophe about 2.5 billion years ago. At the same time, continents were forming on Earth, which would later drift through the world's oceans like puzzles and form a supercontinent. But for now, methane and carbon dioxide still make up most of the atmosphere. They cause the greenhouse effect and the rising temperatures on Earth. But the emergence of oxygen stops the greenhouse effect, and the temperature on our planet drops. An ice age, the so-called Huronian glaciation, which lasted from 2.4 to 2.1 billion years ago, begins. Scientists speculate that our planet was almost completely covered in ice at that time, even on the hot equator. A huge change when you consider that 2 billion years ago, our planet was like a ball and lava, but now it's like a block of ice. 
Earth, during the Huronian glaciation, was more like Jupiter's satellite Europa. There, too, is a thick crust of ice, under which there's a liquid ocean heated by the core. The evolution of the Sun saved our planet. Since its birth 4.5 billion years ago, it's been getting bigger and hotter. So, after 300 million years of an ice age, the Earth began to warm up. But almost all life there had been wiped out, and evolution has to start all over again. About 1 billion years ago, all of the continents of our planet were assembled into one hypothesized supercontinent, Rodinia, and all the oceans made up one colossal ocean of Muravia. 750 million years ago, that continent broke apart and huge chunks of land began drifting across the planet. Complex plants and multicellular organisms appeared just at this time. Algae, sponges, and fungi weren't the only inhabitants of the ocean. This is Sprigina. They're a kind of worms the size of a human finger. We have remains of these animals that are at least about 550 million years old. 541 million years ago, the Phanerozoic Eon began. The main event at that time is the Cambrian Explosion. Life began to blossom on Earth, and a great variety of living organisms appeared. Mollusks and echinoderms like starfish and sea urchins appeared. Living organisms evolved, having not only an internal but also an external skeleton, like trilobites. Some of these things could reach nearly 3 feet in length. Their protective shells suggest that there were predators in the ocean. A food chain started forming at that time. At the same moment, the drifting continents fused again. This supercontinent has a different shape and is called Pannotia. Later, these continents drifted apart again and began to collide with each other. This led to the formation of mountain ranges. Then the continents met for the last time and formed the giant supercontinent Pangaea about 335 million years ago. Here we can already see the outline of the modern continents of Africa, North and South America, Australia, and Eurasia. One of the largest sea creatures ever, the Dunkleosaurus, appeared. Some individuals could be as long as a school bus and weigh as much as a large SUV. The land had a hot and humid climate. It encouraged ferns and other plants to grow faster. Some of them could reach the height of a three-story building. And for the first time in Earth's history, some animals leave the ocean and go on lands, such as El Genirpeton and Ichthyostega. Anyway, at first, they live only on the coast because their skin wasn't adapted to the constant sunlight. In addition, they experience breathing problems. The first animals on land had both gills and lungs, but the lungs were underdeveloped, so they had to return to the water. Millions of years later, these animals evolved into more advanced amphibians. Though they were no bigger than ordinary lizards, they could already live fully on land. But this blossoming of life ended in a new ice age. Glaciers from the poles slowly crept toward the equator. Animals weren't prepared for this, and most of them didn't survive this extinction event. But 290 million years ago, evolution retook hold and more evolved land animals began to appear. Gradually, they increased in size, multiplied, and gave birth to a new species like Scutosaurus and Gorgonopsis. But this period didn't last long either. Only 40 million years later, as a result of unknown events, 95% of all living organisms on Earth ceased to exist. It could have been caused by a giant meteorite or by increased volcanic activity. Also, one hypothesis says it could have been the release of methane from the bottom of the ocean. The Mesozoic era began after this extinction. This is where the dinosaurs as we know them appeared and started a new page in Earth's history. And here you are, on Earth, 66 million years ago. It's one of the warmest periods in the planet's history. There are no ice caps yet. Everything is lush and green. Dinosaurs roam the Earth. Massive sauropods peacefully chew on flowering plants and trees, their young ones following closely by their side. Ah, You strain your neck to see their heads five stories above you. But that's when you see something else. A bright spot in the sky. A shooting star. Ah, make a wish. Wait a minute. The star grows bigger, brighter. Little do the mass reptiles know, today marks the beginning of one of the largest mass extinction events in Earth's history. Three quarters of life on our planet will be wiped out. Hey, we'll just hide over here and watch. Five seconds before impact. 
The meteorite rips a hole through our atmosphere like a needle in a balloon. The resulting supersonic shock wave starts to ripple around the globe. You'd hear it on the opposite side of the planet. The cosmic monster falling toward the Earth is the size of Mount Everest, at least 6 miles wide and weighing 460 trillion tons. The meteor is coming in hot and fast, 12 miles per second, heading right for the Yucatan Peninsula in present-day Mexico. At that speed, it could travel from LA to New York in under 4 minutes. Impact The mountain-sized asteroid smashes into the Earth. If only it had been anywhere else, life on this planet might look a lot different today. The Yucatan Peninsula, almost entirely underwater then, was one of just eight places on the entire globe that would have let a giant space rock wipe out nearly all life on the planet, meaning the asteroid only had a 13% chance of causing a mass extinction. And it happened to hit just the right spot. Well, aren't we lucky? At the point of impact, there's an explosion a billion times more powerful than even the most massive volcanic eruption. It looks like a new sun has appeared on our planet's surface. The meteorite digs into the Earth's crust and explodes into a million pieces. You can still see the scar it left. The Chicxulub crater is 93 miles wide and 12 miles deep. It could fit the entire state of Vermont and 24 Burj Khalifas stacked on top of each other. Something that leaves a scar like that has global consequences. The Earth ripples. The shock wave spreads for thousands of miles. The air blasts flatten forests in a second. Everything within striking radius is set ablaze. Nothing survives ground zero. But that was just the beginning. Smaller fragments of the meteorite, as well as parts of the Earth displaced by the giant hole it dug, go ricocheting out, reaching as far as Canada. The sky lights up with fireballs. They smash into the surface as well. Dinosaurs that weren't in the blast radius run in panic. But they have nowhere to hide. It's only about to get worse. The shock waves race across the sea. The tsunami is nearly a mile high when it hits the coast. The waves keep traveling, reaching the furthest corners of the planet. Even across the Pacific and up into the North Atlantic, they're five stories high. They wash away everything in their path. Besides the raging fires and skyscraper-sized tsunamis, the Earth is shaking from the worst earthquakes in history. A planet lush and teeming with life only a few minutes ago has turned into a nightmarish place. But this was only phase one. Five minutes after impact. Small rocks, dust, and ash rise high up into the atmosphere. These objects heat up and melt. They turn into hot lava that begins to fall to the ground like burning rain. 10 hours after impact. Fires continue to engulf everything in their path. Some surviving dinosaurs in North America try to escape to unknown territories. But now they're in dense swamps and can't escape. One month after impact. 15 trillion tons. Two and a half million times the weight of the Great Pyramid of Giza. That much ash and soot are released into the atmosphere. The cloud covers the entire planet and blocks out the sun. The Earth sinks into darkness. Surviving plants can't photosynthesize. Oxygen levels drop. Any animals left at this point are finally done in from lack of air. But the worst consequence was the extinction of photoplankton. The entire oceanic food chain starts to collapse like a house of cards. Many marine animals have lost their main source of food. Surviving animals on land also can't find anything to eat. There are no plants for the herbivores, and soon no herbivores left for the meat-eaters. And still, there's the acid rain. The Chicxulub meteorite hit a place where there was a lot of sulfur. The heat of the impact vaporizes the toxic gas instantly. It mixes with the air in the atmosphere. Acid rains fall all over the planet. The oceans become toxic. And if all that doesn't get them, the cold finally finishes off the job. With the sun blocked out, the burning fireball that is our planet starts to cool down. What's left in the wake? Plants are a little luckier than animals. Seeds and pollen are able to survive these harsh times. The first to slowly paint the charcoal planet green are ferns. 
the wind carries their seeds, sprinkling them across the Earth over 10 years. Then come the palms. The new planets produce oxygen and feed small mammals. Of the reptiles, only turtles and ancient ancestors of crocodiles can survive the temperature and acidity of the planet's waters. Unbelievably, some bird-like dinosaurs survive too. Other species of birds evolve and survive to this day. Sadly though, all terrestrial animals over 50 pounds in weight went extinct. It took much longer for the animal kingdom to recover. Larger mammals, such as rhinos, began to appear only 15 million years after the dinosaurs disappeared. Blue whales, the largest living creature this planet has ever seen, bigger than any of the dinos, only showed up a little over 4 million years ago. Did the dinos have a fighting chance? Scientists say that if the meteorite had hit in the deeper ocean, the story would have gone a lot differently. Yes, the resulting tidal waves would have been 10 times higher than the already massive ones that rippled across the planet. But even a giant mega-tsunami wouldn't be able to wipe out 75% of plant and animal life on Earth. What really did the dinosaurs in was the global blackout. If the meteorite had hit in deeper water, not the shallow sea of the Gulf of Mexico, there wouldn't have been so much dust and ash in the atmosphere. That dropped the oxygen levels and cut off the food chain from the very bottom. There's a theory that climate change and other conditions on Earth 66 million years ago would have still wiped out the dinosaurs, no meteorite necessary. It could be a supervolcano erupting and spewing out large amounts of sulfur and ash into the atmosphere. Perhaps the meteorite just sped up the inevitable. Now let's move on to a more interesting question. Could humanity survive a meteorite impact like that? Back then? Not a chance, obviously. But if something like that were to happen in our time, we have an advanced intellect and technology. We filled the cosmos with probes and satellites, so we know about any possible meteors headed straight our way. It wouldn't take us by surprise. Now, we might have to hide deep underground to avoid the blast wave and tsunamis. And you'd need enough food down there to last for at least a year. And don't forget your toilet paper. But with the right prep, humanity could stand a chance. The main problem after such an event is to survive the global winter when the ash covers the sky. But our species can handle it. Just ask anyone living in Omayakon, Russia. The town of 500 people holds a Guinness World Record for the coldest inhabited place on Earth. They've seen the thermometer read minus 90 degrees Fahrenheit. What about preserving plant and animal life? Our species has been working on that for a long time. There's a World Seed Storage Facility on Salvard Island. It's about 40 stories underground and can hold over 2 billion samples. The location was chosen because of the permafrost climate and low tectonic activity. Preserving all the planet's animals would be a tougher job. Perhaps genetic engineering, cloning, or something else would work. Herding them all down into a bunker? I mean, crocs, bears, and snakes included? Mm, I think I'd rather try my luck above ground, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the fight of the century! In the left corner is the most famous dinosaur of all time, Tyrannosaurus rex. Let's call her Tyriana! She existed about 70 million years ago and was a true queen in today's North American territory. No one could defeat her in a fair battle. Well, except for that big meteor. <laughs> Spoiler! In the right corner is the nightmare of the sea, Megalodon. This one's named Megan. This species went extinct about 3 million years ago, but legends about it are still alive. It's the biggest shark that ever existed, and it was a super predator in its time. Both fighters are the highest predators in their category. But what happens when they meet face to face? To find out, let's move on to the first category, size. The largest T-Rex ever found was named Scotty. Hey, beam me up! His hips were about 12 feet tall. But if Scotty straightened his back, he would be about 42 feet tall. It's like putting three giraffes on top of each other. And if you wanted to pet this cute guy on the nose, you'd have to stand on the shoulders of seven people to reach him. Even though our T-Rex is not the biggest of its kind, 
Tyriana still remains one of the most dangerous. But now, let's look at the size of her opponent. The size of the Megalodon is still a controversial thing. The fact is that the only remains of this ancient shark are teeth and vertebrae. So scientists can only guess about the real size of this shark. But even by the most modest calculations, it's bigger than T-Rex. Megalodon was about 50 feet long, which is more than a school bus. It was not only the most massive shark that ever existed, but also the largest fish in the world. Its closest competitor in size was a modern whale shark. But he loses to Megalodon by as much as 10 feet. So, in the size category, Megalodon left no chance for T-Rex. The first point goes to the giant shark, Megan. The next class is weight. Let's start with Megan. Usually, adults had a weight of 27 to 59 tons. This is like three heavy lift transport helicopters, or almost like a tank. Actually, some houses have less weight than Megalodon. Its only competitor in the sea is the blue whale. What does T-Rex answer to this? Although it's an incredibly large predator, the largest individual rexes could only reach a weight of 14 tons. That's relatively small for its size. T-Rex could be terribly slow and clumsy, but some of its bones are hollow. This is what reduces its total weight. Thanks to this, she could be much faster and more agile without losing strength. But we see that Tyriana loses to Megan in weight by at least three times. So, another point goes to Megalodon. Next up is speed and agility. According to different estimates, Tyrannosaurus rex could run at speeds of 11 to 45 miles per hour. For comparison, the speed of the fastest human on Earth is only 16 miles per hour. So, you do the math. Yep, we wouldn't have had a chance to escape having lunch with, sorry, being lunch for T-Rex. But what about maneuverability? Tyriana seems to be big and clumsy. However, T-Rex had excellent balance because of her massive tail and could turn and change direction very quickly. And look at her legs. She clearly doesn't miss a leg day. Now let's look at the second fighter, Megan. Scientists have found that the Megalodon could swim at a speed of about 11 miles per hour. This was enough to become an ultimate predator, but it was inferior to many other species. For example, the fastest sea creature is the sailfish. It can reach 68 miles per hour, about 100 feet per second. Besides, because of its heavy weight, it could not quickly turn or maneuver. Imagine a giant truck needing to make a U-turn. So, when she attacked, she had only one chance to strike. If she missed, she went for a second lap. This gave her prey enough time to run away. In this round, T-Rex finally gets her first score. But we're still 2-1 to one in favor of Megan the Megalodon. Okay, moving on to the next category, fighting skills. Megalodon was definitely the best predator in the aquatic world. Not only because of its size and mass, but also because of its intelligence. Scientists have found traces of Megalodon's teeth on the remains of whales. They concluded that Megan aimed at her prey's weakest spots and knew where the vital organs were located. Other remains of Megalodon's victims had many bone fractures. This suggests that she was not shy about using her weight as a ram. Such a 50-ton ram could easily break through concrete walls. Some individuals prefer to attack the whale's tails and fins first to immobilize them, then attack a defenseless victim. This makes the Megalodon an excellent strategist. Megalodon's prey just didn't have a chance. So this shark had two main techniques, ram and ultimate bite. But the arsenal of T-Rex is much broader. Like a Megalodon, it had the strongest bite of its kind and also used a ram. Although its weight was not as big as Meg's, Tyriana could reach a much higher speed, and her impact was much more powerful than that of a shark. On top of that, she could strike with her tail, and her legs had a tremendous force and could hold the victim. No doubt, the T-Rex arsenal is much more diverse. So this point goes to the dinosaur. Now it's time for the bonus category, the prize of audience sympathies. T-Rex is undoubtedly the most famous dinosaur of all time. It's appeared in movies, TV series, cartoons, video games, and even postage stamps and memes. 
and its skeleton in the American Museum of Natural History is the most recognizable in the world. But there are also many myths about it. For example, the idea that it could only see moving objects. In a famous movie, the heroes escape from a T-Rex by just remaining frozen in place. Well, first of all, a dinosaur could easily smell them. Secondly, T-Rex had an excellent vision. It was actually 13 times clearer than humans. Megalodon, on the other hand, has the reputation of a real devil. A scene where Megalodon destroys a fishing boat is still a cult favorite and frightening for viewers worldwide. But because there were so few remains left of it, we can only guess what it really looked like. So, Instagram T-Rex would be much more popular. T-Rex takes this point. Let's move forward. The score is 2-2. Two to two. So the results of the battle will be decided by the last round. Combat tools. Tyrannosaurus rex had the most powerful bite force of its kind. It could easily break dinosaur bones much bigger than themselves. But the power of their bite was limited by their teeth. They had a weak layer of enamel and were quite brittle, though they rebuilt quite quickly. Her front hands have sharp claws, but this weapon is mostly useless because of the structure of these arms. Megalodon has only one dangerous tool, its teeth. But they can be worth everything that T-Rex has. The teeth of the Megalodon were triangular in shape and were over 7 inches long. These are the most massive teeth that have ever existed. And it had 250 teeth, arranged in five rows. Each of them was incredibly sharp and could penetrate through the thick skin of whales. Also, the Megalodon's jaw was 6.5 feet wide. An adult person could easily fit in there, but not for long. <laughs> because Megalodon had one of the strongest bites on our planet. The gong sounds. And it means it's time to start the fight. These two predators meet on the coast of North America. Megalodons mostly lived in deep waters, but sometimes they hunted near beaches. T-Rex was also in this area, and now these two predators have come face to face. In shallow water, the Megalodon becomes even slower, and T-Rex easily evades its bite. But it's difficult for her to attack the shark, because Tyriana's body size does not allow her to dive underwater. T-Rex decides to retreat to even shallower water. Megan the Megalodon drops, trying to bite the dinosaur and just rams her with all of her 50-ton weight. The T-Rex loses her balance and falls down. Now, nothing can help her. Uh-oh. So, Megalodon proves again that she was the ultimate predator and could easily defeat the world's most famous dinosaur. A shimmering portal closes behind your back. A smiley guy greets you. Hey, you're not the first person to travel between the worlds, but such a journey still remains something out of the ordinary. At first sight, the place is not that different from your own. The same people, the same transport, similar architecture. Hmm, then why did your friend swear it would be the trip of your life? Your travel agent told you the town you'd be visiting is at the seaside. That's why you ask your guide if you could spend some time near the ocean. He gives you a funny look, but agrees. The day's brilliant, sunny, and hot. It feels only natural to take your clothes off to get some sun. After a while, you get up to go have a swim in foamy waves. But your guide grabs your arm. His grip is unexpectedly strong, his face anxious. No, it was risky enough to come to the beach and stay so close to the water. And now you're going to take a chance with your life? Huh? That's all you can answer. There must be some misunderstanding. What's so dangerous about this beach? Rip currents? The guide suddenly calms down. Don't tell me you don't know why people from your world travel here. You shake your head, and the man starts to laugh. When he's done chuckling, he becomes serious and mutters, Okay. I'll show you something you won't be able to forget, ever. Let's go. You walk along the beach, keeping more than enough space between you and the water. What surprises and worries you the most is the eerie silence. The only sound you can hear is waves hitting the shore. No kids cheering, no surfers riding their boards, no fishers waiting for a good catch. Your guide slows down, and you see a small harbor. For some mysterious reason, 
It's separated from the open ocean by a thick metal fence with massive gates. You and your guide are heading for a large boat, or rather, a ship. Uh, just how many people are going to join us on this excursion, you ask? It's just the two of us and the crew, your guide replies. In our world, it's too dangerous to put to sea on a smaller vessel. And indeed, you notice no fishing boats or yachts nearby. You follow your guide downstairs and see a large cabin with a glass floor. Feel free to step on the glass, it's super thick and literally unbreakable. The ship starts vibrating and moves away from the shore. You're watching the rocky bottom, corals, and schools of colorful fish pass by. The water under the ship is getting darker. All of a sudden, your guide whispers, Here it is! The creature is enormous, longer than a semi-trailer and almost as long as the vessel you're on. Its body shape resembles that of the modern-day monitor lizard, but longer and more streamlined. This makes the animal more fitted for swimming. Its limbs are short, with webbing between fingers. It also has a wide tail with a broad, triangular plate on it. While swimming, the critter keeps its body stiff to reduce the drag through the water. The only thing that's moving is its mighty tail. As soon as you manage to get your voice under control, you scream, A dino! Nope, your guy doesn't agree. It's a mosasaur. They are dinosaurs. These creatures are reptiles. You must have their close relatives in your world, snakes and monitor lizards. The mosasaur you see is one of the largest species, which are quite rare. There are many kinds of these reptiles, and the smallest is a mere 3 feet long. The average length is 13 feet at the most. But big specimens still occur. That's why we have to build such large, sturdy ships. Just one tail swipe from this beast, and a smaller vessel would be broken in half. The mosasaur, you still find it hard to wrap your mind around it, is swimming under your boat for some time, and then swooshes up to the surface. Your guide answers the question in your eyes. Mosasaurs need air. That's why they regularly rise to get some. That's the reason they prefer shallow coastal waters. The creature returns. This time, you get a chance to see its jaws. Each is completed with two extra rows of triangular teeth. Behind them, you spot its tongue. And wait, is it really forked? All in all, the creature's mouth looks like one of a snake, including the teeth. They're also curved backward not to let prey slip away. Your guide chooses this moment to start telling you about the awesome creature. Yeah, Mosasaurus is evolved around 100 million years ago. But 34 million years later, something went wrong, and they didn't disappear like it happened in your world. That's why now, our oceans are very different from yours. Fish and mammals in our oceans have developed special traits that allow them to avoid Mosasaurus. Plus, thanks to this reptile, we have a much greater diversity of marine species. You notice your mosasaur dashing up and to the left. When it returns, there's something that looks suspiciously like a bird in its jaws. Noticing your surprise, the guide explains mosasaurs eat pretty much anything, from fish and mollusks to seabirds and turtles. Suddenly, your guide screams, scaring you out of your wits. There! There! Can you see it? Honestly speaking, at first you see nothing. But after straining your eyes, you spot two huge shadows circling each other. Your guide is brimming with excitement. You can't imagine how lucky we are! I've been doing this job for 15 years, but I've never seen a mosasaur fighting with a megalodon! For a moment, your mind stops functioning. Has he just said there are megalodons in his world? And then you see it. A giant animal is coming closer. It's almost 60 feet long, bigger than the whale shark, the largest of all the shark species in your world. Your guide keeps blabbing. Both of these creatures are top predators. Mosasaurs are usually a bit smaller than megalodons, but this one's huge! As the sea monsters get closer, you manage to get a better look at the meg. Its jaws can open for almost 10 feet and are littered with five rows of sharp serrated teeth. They're built in such a way so that they don't crack even after hitting bone. The Meg is an ambush hunter, continues your guide. It probably wanted to take the Mosasaur by surprise by attacking it from below. But this attempt failed. 
Now the predators are moving in circles, likely sizing each other up. They look rather angry and hungry. The mosasaurs try to get closer to the shark's tail or fins. The creature understands there's no way it could bite through the meg's bulky sides. The shark chooses another tactic. It's aiming for the mosasaur's long midsection. The critters start circling faster, getting closer to each other. The mosasaur keeps changing its pace from slow, almost lazy movements to nervous bursts of speed once it sees the meg approaching. The shark is swimming in a steady way, watching the opponent with its piercing black eyes. You can't help but think it's pretty obvious which animal's going to be the winner. The mosasaur's jaws are suited for small prey, like fish. Its jaws wouldn't be able to open wide enough to get around the meg. Because even though both creatures are of the same length, the meg's body is much more massive. Its jaws are also more powerful, designed to deal with whales and other large marine animals. Plus, the mosasaur's body isn't efficient for high-speed swimming. It gives the shark another advantage. In a flash, the meg twists its body and rushes at the mosasaur. Its maneuver is not to let the enemy get an upper hand by striking from below. The two powerful creatures clash each other. You see the mosasaur try to maneuver out of the meg's way, but to no avail. You're clenching your fists, silently sending your support to the mosasaur. And then, a sudden jerk, and you find yourself on the floor. Go, go, go! Your guide shouting at the skipper. It turns out the animals got so engrossed in their confrontation that they didn't notice the vessel and crashed into its side. Now it's crucial to get as far away from them as possible. If these huge creatures decide the ship is their common enemy, they may cooperate to attack it. Luckily for you, the beasts don't realize the thing they collided with is actually a container with food. The boat is getting further and further away, and you can only guess the outcome of the battle. Too soon for your liking, you reach the shore. The guide, who still looks thoroughly stunned, drives you back to the portal. You, similarly awed, thank him and step through the shimmering veil. You're clutching at a mosasaur tooth in your hand. It's the skipper's gift to you, the only reminder about the incredible world where mosasaurs are still roaming the oceans. You wake up with your head feeling heavy. Mmm, one, where's your comfy bed? And two, Why were you just sleeping on the wet and dirty ground in the middle of nowhere? Wait, what's all this stuff around you? Are you in the jungle? There's a backpack nearby with essentials, like water, cookies, candy bars, and a jacket. It's yours for sure, but still, hello, how on earth did you get here? Wait, jacket? It's insanely hot! You definitely won't be needing that. Seriously, what is this place? Giant leafy plants? Thick rainforest trees? Huh? Kind of looks like Jurassic. You jump in fear, look around, and run under one of those shady plants. Okay, not a great choice and definitely not the best time to recall that you're terrible at hide-and-seek. There's a huge, weird-looking animal coming out of the bushes, staring at you. Dinosaur! You scream, you shiver, you cover your eyes. Not exactly how you were expecting your morning to go. Wait a minute. Dinosaurs don't bark. You open your eyes. That thing definitely charged at you. But now it's just jumping around, wagging its long tail, barking, and sticking its tongue out. And it looks so familiar. It's a dog? You almost cry out in relief. That thing's weird. Dogosaurus? What else could it be? Big, gray, and hairy, but insanely familiar to a T-Rex. Its front legs are actually short little arms, and its long muzzle with sharp teeth is all over you. Well, Dogosaurus is covering you with dino slobber. Another hairy thing comes out of the bushes. White and fluffy, short front legs, long dark gray tail, ridiculously big ears. It's a dino rabbit! The two animals start chasing each other and goofing around. Um, is this for real? Dogosaurus gets bored and comes running up to you, starts rubbing its head on your arm. You pet it, while also wondering what to do next. What happens if this thing gets annoyed or hungry? I'm gonna call it Max. You grab a random stick and throw it as far as possible. Well, at least that's over. The dino dog's gone and questions start overloading your brain. What's that thing doing in the jungle? 
What else lives here? Are they all going to be that friendly? It doesn't take long to find out. A horrifying sound fills your ears. You turn slowly this time. Another surprise! Just a few feet away, another huge beast is staring at you. Its eyes are the scariest part, wide open and pointed directly at you. You hold your breath. It could all be over in an instant. But after a moment, you let out a sigh of relief. It's only a zebra. Well, zebrasaurus. Bizarre. Black and white stripes over a muscular body, and wow, that head is long. Its tail looks like it means business, and its back is covered with bony plates. Zebrasaurus takes a step forward. Zebras. They just eat grass and stuff, right? Hope this thing does too. Let's see, three options. Run, lie still, or pet the giant zebrasaurus. Wham! A way more hairy beast jumps out of the bushes and the race is on. Was that a chuckle? A laugh? Wait, was that a hyena? Hyenasaurus? Hyenas have one of the strongest jaws and necks around. That plus dinosaur? Pretty serious combination. One option, run. That zebra seems to know what's up. You start running, fighting off huge leafy plants and tripping over the roots of tall jungle trees. You jump, duck, dodge, and finally get out of the jungle. A beach. Perfect! Now you've got time to think about what you just saw. What's the plan now? Ocean, palm, sun, and finally, some fresh sea air. You take a deep breath and close your eyes. Quiet as a feather, giant paws softly crushing the grass the whoosh of an elegant tail. Huge, grayish, and strong, with insanely long claws hidden in her big, soft paws. And the head? Gross. You do a double take. Still gross. It looks like a bare skull with sharp teeth and warm, yellow eyes. This animal's not interested in you at all. It crouches down, looks ready to pounce. Then, the catasaurus lazily purrs and starts licking its fur. Well, at least it didn't think you looked like a mouse, a stick, a ball, a cardboard box. Cats like the weirdest things. Mm, No time! The beach is suddenly full of gigantic red crabs. There's hundreds of them lying around, resting their long, sharp claws. Since when do crabs have ten eyes and four huge claws? Crabosoraptors do. You cover your mouth, but the scream comes out anyways. You run back into the jungle. Not the best idea. This time, you run and never look back. Your only goal is not to hear those rasping, clicking Crabosoraptor claws anymore. Something's different, though. The jungle's changed. The jungle looks like it's morphing. No more vines, huge weird leaves. The air's cooler. The paths are a bit wider. Apparently, you're in a forest now. You come across a large open field with a big dreamy lake in the middle perfect selfie location, apart from all those dino things, and trees that can shapeshift, apparently. A piercing scream flies across the lake. Pretty easy to recognize this graceful animal, even if the color's a bit off. It's a gray swanodactyl, S-shaped neck and everything. But this swan's had a few upgrades installed. Razor-sharp beak, big strong claws, and eyes that look like they can spot a tasty meal from miles away. Well, you're not a fish, so you'll probably be alright. Apart from that, the lake is gorgeous. Water lilies everywhere, the size of tables. Humongous lilies, humongous, ribbit, ribbit. Great, frogosaurus, that's a thing now. A huge one jumps out of the water and lands like a ninja on a lily. It looks like a huge rock, covered with dark gray bumpy skin. There's no Prince Charming hiding in that thing, (laughs) no way. Whew! You hide behind a giant bush. That frog has an epic-sized tongue. Nasty. Not even that crazy tongue could save it from what was coming up behind it. The floating head of a giant crocodilosaurus wrapped erect something. It looks the same as a regular crocodile, only much bigger. Like it needed any help to make it scarier. Frogosaurus jumps back into the water and starts to swim away with its huge back legs. The chase is on, and pretty soon they both disappear under the surface. Sure hope that guy made it. You almost feel sorry for the poor frog, but there's no time to think. The ground starts to shake. That's never good. A couple of trees near you crash to the ground. It looks like an upside-down boat. What is that thing? 
Oh, Turtle Saurus. That guy needs to lay off the coffee and protein bars. Um? What's that buzzing? It's getting louder and louder. Two things. One, that sounds like a bee. Two, please let it just be normal size. But instead of a tiny flying insect, a human-sized bee rex lands on the giant turtle shell. It's got its legs like a power lifter, and its antennas look sharp. If it's only one, that's okay. Hopefully. Out of nowhere, you hear a horrifying shriek. Oh, please make it stop already. A giant shadow covers the ground, and you look up. Some sort of bird-like dinosaur. These things actually have an official name, but you have no idea what it is. You only see its reddish-blue feathers, a sharp beak full of sharper teeth, and what are those things coming out of its wings? The bird sees the B-Rex and swoops down to grab itself a midday snack. But B-Rex hides under the turtle shell. (laughs) Good thinking. Something tells me I wouldn't be that fast or clever if that happened to me. I'd probably just… and then it happens. Its dark, creepy eyes notice you from a distance. You take a small step back. So far, none of the other animals have noticed you. Crack! A twig snaps under your shoe, and suddenly dozens of eyes latch onto you. Curious, angry, hungry eyes. Back to option number one, run. You're going as fast as you can, but everything seems hopeless. You've come to a huge cliff with a river way down at the bottom. You close your eyes and jump. Boom! Your whole body shakes. You open your eyes. You're awake. It was all just a bad dream, right? Right? Ah, baby T-Rex was adorable. There, I said it. Hard to imagine those two words in the same sentence. But come on, even Big Bad T-Rex didn't pop out of its shell all big, scary, and fully grown. In its first few months on Earth, Baby T was a cute, fluffy, turkey-sized ball of fuzz. It was kind of like a weird-looking bird coming out of an oversized egg. Not enough food, dangerous surroundings, asteroids, hmm. Poor baby T's were so helpless and weak, only about half of them made it to their first birthday party. Scientists think their fuzz was there to keep them warm when they were still small and vulnerable. Plus, it helped them camouflage and stay safe. Baby T's didn't have big, sharp teeth, yet. So, they mostly munched on smaller reptiles and insects. Baby T's grew up pretty fast. They put on up to 6 pounds a day. Hey, I've done that. No, not really. Just felt like it. The weirdest fact about them? When they were little, their arms looked totally normal compared to their bodies. But by the time they were full-grown, their parents were super famous. Plastered all over t-shirts, um, that would be a T-Rex t-shirt, um, movies, and the greatest Halloween costume ever, in my humble opinion. But the T-Rex we know and love didn't really exist. First of all, speed. They weren't really that fast. In the movies, you could never get away from them, even if the path was clear and you were in a pretty decent car. Early predictions were that T-Rexes could run somewhere between 10 and 30 miles an hour, which is whoa! But recent research shows they could only reach around 12 miles per hour. Anything more than that would have shattered their massive bones. So relax. After a couple months of training, even the most dedicated couch potato could get away from the sharp teeth of this guy. And what about our good friend Stegosaurus? It lived around 150 million years ago, so it didn't even get the chance to meet those cute baby teeth. They appeared much later. We all recognize this dinosaur. It's the one with those ridiculous upright plates on its back. They were sometimes up to 3 feet tall. You could hide behind one. Scientists still don't really know why they had them, but they think Stegosaurus could have regulated blood flow through them, like a massive bony thermostat. They also believe these dinos could use the same system to control their skin color, depending on whether they wanted to look good or look scary. Sounds impressive, right? Well, at least something about them does, because this poor thing had a brain that weighed just a tiny bit more than a tennis ball and was around the size of a walnut. That's a dog's brain in a hippo's body. Troodon was one of the most brainy dinosaurs. A great all-around fella, excellent hunter, stereoscopic vision, 6 feet long, and a brain that just won't quit. 
What a catch! Troodon's remains were one of the first dinosaur discoveries in North America. One of the weirdest members of the dinos was definitely… well, let's just call her Sue. If you met her, you'd feel like you're looking at a big turkey rat thing with a super furry body. It might be the long-lost grandma of the modern ground sloth. Its buddy, Pegamostax, definitely wasn't far behind when it comes to racking up the weirdo points. It looked like something between a porcupine and parrot. But don't say that to its face, it had a couple of pointy teeth that could sharpen against one another. The largest and one of the heaviest known dinosaurs was Argentinosaurus. No one ever found a complete skeleton, but this beast must have weighed about 100 tons and was about 130 feet long. Compare it to the biggest animal we have now, the blue whale. It's only 100 feet long. When someone says dinosaur, you probably imagine some big-as-a-building beast that could use a tree as a toothpick. Some of them were gigantic, true, like those long-neck, long-tail dinos. Those things were as long as an airplane. But many of them were small and lightweight, some of them the size of pigeons. The smallest dinosaur skeleton ever found was a tiny mouse lizard. Some dinosaurs had tails that were more than 45 feet long. That way, it was easier for them to keep their balance when running. But they didn't drag their tail along the ground. Dinosaurs kept pretty active and were quite fast. So they kept their tails in the air most of the time. Even though that naughty asteroid wiped most of them out, a lot of dino DNA stuck around and morphed into animals we know today, like birds. The first time anyone even thought of linking the two together was after they discovered a primitive bird in Germany. Sehr gut. Later, researchers classified two groups of dinosaurs, depending on what kind of hips they had. The first group looked pretty familiar. They had lizard-like hips. The second group had bird-like hips. And a third group looked like Shakira, which is where her tune My Hips Don't Lie comes from. Actually, no. Also, plenty of old-school carnivores had bones filled with air, which is something birds have too. Birds may be the dinosaurs' living descendants, but some animals actually witness the age of dinosaurs. If only they could talk. Snakes, bees, sharks, crabs, lobsters, yum, crocodiles, cockroaches, even green sea turtles. They all actually saw real dinosaurs. So jealous. Carnivore dinos mostly walked on two feet. That way they could be faster and have their hands free to grab a little snackosaurus. Plant eaters walked on four feet so they could carry their heavy bodies. Some of the bigger plant eaters needed around a ton of food per day, literally. Imagine animals so big, they had to eat a house-sized pile of veggies on a daily basis. Still, a huge bush a day keeps the doctor away. Is that where that started? There are around 700 known species of extinct dinosaurs. Sounds like a lot, but we probably haven't discovered them all. Five years back, they found out about a new type of dinosaur. It had these stubby horns right above its eyes, which looked so much like the comic book character. They named it Hellboy. Hop on the bright side of life together with our brand new tees, hoodies, and more. Click the link to pick your choice. In the 90s, scientists discovered a crater in Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. You know the story. Around 66 million years ago, a meteor the size of Mount Everest hit our planet and filled the atmosphere with dust, gas, and debris that caused a serious climate catastrophe. It triggered a heat wave and a blast wave that went up into the atmosphere, partially blocking out the sun. Game over. Thanks for playing, dinosaurs! The age of humans never crossed over with the dinosaur era. Dinosaurs disappeared more than 60 million years ago but they existed on Earth for 160 million years. Modern-looking humans have only been around for about 250,000 years. Only 59 million years to go, people! Not all the dinosaurs were on vacation in Mexico when the asteroid hit. They lived all over the globe. Some lived in deserts, while others lived in areas near ancient rivers surrounded by thick forests and rich vegetation. They weren't too picky, so they lived wherever, even Antarctica. But it wasn't covered in snow back then. Both poles had forests growing on them. Most people imagine all dinosaurs to be grayish-green because of the movies. Plus, we usually just think of them as giant lizards. 
Scientists still don't know much about dinosaur skin tones, but researchers recently found some evidence that dinosaurs totally embraced the rainbow. One little guy had white and orange rings on its tail. Dinosaur is Greek for terrible lizard. Scientists used to think dinosaurs were mostly cold-blooded like snakes, lizards, or other reptiles. Turns out they were wrong, maybe. Some evidence pointed to them being warm-blooded like mammals. Somewhere in 2014, scientists discovered that most dinosaurs were mesotherms. A little of this, a little of that. And it turned out many of them had feathers, just like little baby tea. It helped them regulate their body temperature. Another thing we got from the movies and totally thought was real? What dinosaurs sound like? Producers usually mix together a bunch of animal noises to get that authentic dino roar. T-Rex is usually a mix of alligator, tiger, and the squealing of a baby elephant. And that dreaded T-Rex breath? It was just the sound of air going through a whale's blowhole. The largest land animal ever known was Argentinosaurus. One bone of this giant was as large as a grown-up human. The complete skeleton hasn't been discovered yet. Still, the scientists claim this dinosaur could be around 121 to 131 feet. If seven Argentinosauruses stood in a row, they could replace the London Bridge. Pterosaurs were usually large. The smallest species had a 10-inch wingspan, while the largest ones could have it up to 36 feet wide. For comparison, the largest span of a modern bird's wings is just about 11 feet. They were the size of a modern giraffe, but they weighed less to be able to fly, only 550 pounds. Brachiosaurus was 86 feet long, and it had an incredibly long neck, standing over 40 feet in the air. Its whole body was designed for this animal to get food from trees easily. Its hind legs were relatively short, and the front ones somewhat longer. Diplodocus had curious teeth shaped like a comb. The dino was 85 feet long and weighed slightly more than three elephants. Its neck was so long that scientists aren't sure how the animal could even hold it. Parala Titan was about 82 to 100 feet long. Its bones were so large that Parala Titan could even rival Argentinosaurus in size. If they invaded London, Four of these creatures standing on each other's shoulders would be enough to fix Big Ben's hands if they were a little too fast. Austroposeidon, what a beautiful name, huh? Is the largest among all the titanosaur species. A fully grown animal was about 80 feet long, which is around one and a half of a Hollywood sign. Spinosaurus lived where the Sahara Desert is now. There used to be rivers full of fish and lots of swamps, so it lived both in and out of the water. It was almost 50 feet long and had a large plate on its back that looked more like a sail and spines on its sides. Tylosaurus was one of the biggest creatures that ever lived on our planet. It grew to 45 feet long, ate fish and even larger creatures like sharks, except for the meg, which was about the same length. Tylos had a really weird extra set of teeth on the roof of its mouth for a better grip and grind. Despite its large size, T-Rex was really fast and had a large brain. This terrifying 40-foot-long dino was related to a chicken. It came from a bird family and might have had feathers, so it's technically a very angry bird with very sharp teeth. Their tiny arms with two fingers were the size of human arms. Suchomimus looked like a retro version of a crocodile. By the way, its name actually means crocodile mimic. They were about 34 to 36 feet long, almost twice as long as today's longest saltwater croc named Lo Long. It measured slightly above 20 feet. Parasaurolphus had incredible jaws that would grind and not chew plants. It had a weird head ornament. The scientists still aren't sure about its purpose, but one of the most popular theories claims it was much needed for regulating temperature. These giants were 12 feet tall and over 30 feet long. Allosaurus had 8-inch long claws, 70 massive razor-sharp teeth, and a flexible skull. Thanks to its bone structure and jaws that could bend outwards, 
These dinos could grab and hold even the largest chunks of meat. They were only 9 feet tall, slightly taller than the world's tallest man, but very long, having 32-foot bodies. Stegosaurus was famous for the plates that adorned its spine. They were used as thermocontrol, soaking up sunlight during the day and distributing it all over its body at night. They had a pretty small brain compared to their body mass. These dinos were about 30 feet long and 13 feet tall. A triceratops weighed 8 tons despite a plant-based diet. They were quite slow walking because of that multi-ton weight. To chew those leaves better and faster, it was geared with about 800 teeth. This many teeth would never fit in a human's mouth. It's as if one human had teeth of 25 adult individuals. Compared to his dino mates, Majungasaurus was relatively short, around 6 feet, yet quite long, about 25 feet. Its enormous tail would make up over 50% of its body length. If these guys lived in London, there'd be no way they could take a double-decker, being just the same length as this famous London bus. Plateosaurus, which literally means a flat lizard, was about 23 feet long. It weighed like four cows and had large claws for thumbs that it could use to collect food. Scientists aren't sure if it walked on two or four feet. Gallimimus was about 20 feet long thanks to its large tail. It was also pretty tall, about nine feet. A human being could stand without bending under that tail if it was raining. It wasn't that broad, but enough to keep one human dry. Dilophosaurus was quite into eating fish. Its teeth weren't powerful enough, and the front ones even had a gap between them. So real hunting was sort of a challenge for it. These dinos were about 19 feet long, just about the size of a giraffe stretched on a grassy lawn, and 6 feet tall. Pachycephalosaurus, let's call it simply Paco, may not have been the largest of its kind, but it had spectacular 3D eyes. If you invited it to the movies, it would probably need no glasses on. It would be hard to find a comfortable seat for your new buddy, though. It was about 16 feet long and 5 feet tall. Dracorex means the king of dragons, probably because of the numerous knobs on its head that looked like a crown. It had tiny front arms, so even if it had a crown on, it wouldn't have been able to take it off. They were about 15 feet long, had awesome sharp teeth and incredibly hard skulls that were a perfect soft cushion for their tiny brains. Trudon was shorter than an adult human, only 4 feet tall, but it was wider, measuring about 6 feet. Scientists believe it was the smartest dino of all. Compared to modern land animals, a Trudon was as smart as an ostrich, and these guys are brainy. It also had a lot of teeth letting them eat different types of food. There was one dino as large as a human being. An average human is about 5 foot 6 inches tall and 1 foot 6 inches wide. This guy was slightly larger than a human lying on a couch. 1 foot 6 inches tall and 6 foot 5 inches wide thanks to its lovely tail. It's a velociraptor, a bird-like dinosaur. Even though these birds had wings and feathers, they were unable to fly. Another dino that could blend in human groups, if they coexisted, was Borogobia. It was neither tall nor wide, both measurements under 5 feet. It could be a nice prehistoric pet. Microraptor wasn't that good at flying, despite having long feathers and long upper arm bones. It could probably glide from tree to tree, looking for some food, or even launch itself into the air and fly short distances. It weighed under 1 pound and was about two and a half feet long. Juravenator was only two and a half feet long, shorter than a Maine Coon. Many theropods were bird-like, but this dino most likely had scales instead of feathers. Anchiornis was another giant chicken, just like T-Rex. This guy had colorful feathers and was impressively good at flying short distances. Still, long distances were quite challenging for it. They were tiny, only about 13 inches long, and weighed no more than 4 ounces. The smallest dino that had ever lived on our planet was Oculodentibus. It was even smaller than today's world's smallest bird, the bee hummingbird. But while the latter prefer eating some freshly picked nectar, 
Ocula dentibus had razor sharp teeth and preferred insects to sweet flowers. It's kind of unfair to talk about prehistoric animals and not include Mr. Mammoth. They weren't that large, just about the size of a modern African elephant. The main difference between mammoths and elephants is the ear size. Because of cold climate, mammoths had small ears and kept them close to their heads. Their tusks were 15 feet long, about the length of a Dragorex. This day isn't different than any other. Well, not yet, anyway. <laughs> you crawl out of bed, your hair's a mess, a huge yawn stretching your jaws. Five more minutes and you could be late. So, no time to waste. You blast through your morning routines, skip breakfast, throw on your jacket, and hurriedly close the door. Bang! Darkness. You slowly blink your eyes open. The air smells different, making you feel dizzy. Your ears catch something similar to a dino movie soundtrack. Once you glance around, though, you realize it looks like a prehistoric world, too. It's humid and warm. Everything around you looks green and lush. You spot several creatures moving among the trees. Some of them have bills that make them look like overgrown ducks. Others have horns. That's when your brain kicks in. Those are dinosaurs. So you have indeed, somehow, moved all the way back to prehistoric times. Right after the realization hits, you feel something tickling your arm. With a feeling of dread, you sneak a peek. Huh, what is this creature comfortably nestled on your sleeve? What you notice first is that it's tiny, way, way smaller than your cat. It's likely napping on your pillow back at home in the moment. You're a hummingbird, the smallest bird on Earth. The creature on your sleeve is even smaller than that. Is it some weird prehistoric insect? No, nope, it's a dino, the tiniest dinosaur that ever lived. The creature's called Oculu dentavis, which means in Latin, eye tooth bird. With a skull that's less than a quarter of an inch long, the animal itself is about two inches long. You can hardly feel its weight on your arm. The tiny thing doesn't weigh more than an ounce. The dino is obviously a meat eater. It has more than 100 microscopic teeth. They're conical with sharp edges. For a second, you can't breathe. What if it bites you? You don't even know if the thing is venomous. But it looks as if the dino bird is only interested in insects that are flying by. The creature also has huge eyes. They're so large, it's a bit alarming. They face to the sides and bulge out of its head. They're built in the way that makes it clear the tiny dino is active most during the day. If only there was a scientist next to you. They would tell you how such a minuscule creature could exist in the prehistoric world of giants. It was likely because of the miniaturization. That's when relatively large animals became smaller over generations. It sometimes happens to species that live on islands or are isolated from other animals. Another thing an expert could tell you? The creature sitting on your arm might not even be a dino. After scientists examined the ancient animal's skull, or should we say will examine, they suggested it was not a dinosaur, but a lizard. But even if their guess is right, it was a bizarre lizard. After all, it has a bird's head. Anyway, whatever the animal is, you are tired of standing still trying not to disturb it. But as soon as you take a step, everything goes dark again. Bang! You cautiously open your eyes. Another day, another jungle. You look around to check your surroundings. And that's when you notice that several massive bushes on the left have started to move. You know you should probably run away as fast as you can, but your curiosity wins. You sneak up closer to have a look and your ear-piecing shriek is heard miles away. The creature you're looking at is similar to a millipede. An enormous, six-foot-long millipede, the largest among them all. It's called Arthropleura. Scientists aren't sure why this bug, like many others, was so large 300 million years ago. Maybe because there was too much oxygen in the atmosphere. 30% of the air then versus 21% now. It probably helped prehistoric insects grow so massive. Plus, there was nothing around that could eat them. The only comforting thought that doesn't let you pass out from sheer horror is that the monster isn't likely to be a meat-eater. 
It's related to millipedes, and they eat decomposing organic matter. Mmm, yum. You hardly have some time to take a breath when something swooshes past you. You realize it's time you got used to scary overgrown creatures. This flying one looks like a dragonfly, but its wingspan is no less than two feet. Scientists claim it's been the largest known insect of all time. The craziest thing, though? The insect looks exactly like a scaled-up dragonfly, but it actually belongs to the now extinct order of griffin flies. But what's that? Instead of flying away, the not-a-dragonfly is turning back. Um, it's moving toward you. Paralyzed by fear, you don't even try to run away. Bang! Darkness. Well, this is getting old. You open your eyes and see a dark shadow towering over your lying body. This is definitely a dino. You even know its name, the Stegosaurus. These large dinosaurs lived during the late Jurassic period, around 150 million years ago. They had absolutely amazing plates placed along their spine. The largest were more than 2 feet tall and 2 feet wide. Stegosauruses were heavy, massive, and clumsy. They grew more than twice as tall as an adult person and weighed about 5 tons. At the same time, this huge body was controlled by a tiny brain. It was twice smaller than the brain of a modern dog. It was one of the reasons why the dinosaur was such a slow thing. Some experts claim its maximum speed was no more than 5 miles per hour. Now, before you have time to get afraid, you realize the creature isn't interested in you whatsoever. But what an impressive plant-eating machine it is! With the help of its toothless beak, it's nipping low-growing plants, like pines, firs, and cyads. But soon, you understand you shouldn't let your guard down. A dark shadow covers the sky. Ah, you know this guy too! That's a pterodactyl! It was the first discovered species of pterosaurs, large flying reptiles. The pterodactyl walked on four legs and, unlike some other members of its family, it had teeth. By the way, even though pterodactyls were flying creatures, they weren't ancestors of modern-day birds. Those descended from tiny meat-eating dinosaurs that walked on two legs and were covered in feathers. Anyway, the creature circling in the air over your head doesn't look as frightening as in the movies. It's rather small, with its wingspan no more than three feet. But to be on the safe side, you decide to hide under the trees. Hey, you've been around pigeons. Imagine a present from this character. Ah, never mind. It's just your luck to trip over a tree root while retreating to the questionable safety of the forest. Your back hits the ground. Bang! Darkness. Well, when you come around again, you find it hard to breathe. It feels as if something's wrapped around your body. You raise your head, slowly and cautiously. Ah, is this day gonna end? A colossal snake has coiled itself around you. The creature's so large, you immediately realize it's the Titanoboa. No other reptile, living or extinct, can be that big. The snake weighs more than a ton and is probably around 42 feet long. For comparison, one of the largest modern snakes, the anaconda, weighs one quarter of a ton and reaches the length of 30 feet at the most. The Titanoboa lived around 60 million years ago in South America. Just like modern anacondas, it loved damp places hidden in tropical rainforests. Scientists aren't sure, but they think the prehistoric reptile could live in or near the water. Then it probably fed on crocodiles, turtles, and even fish. Suddenly, you feel the snake move. Is it going to squeeze tight around you? That's when you start to regret you can't do that time jump thing at your whim. And then, bang, darkness. You find yourself on the bank of a wide river. Once you get closer to the water, you notice something moving under the surface. You lean down to check what it is, but the next moment, you spring back in fear. The two-foot-long fish you see has a single row of triangular razor-sharp teeth, each serrated like a steak knife. It's the Mega Piranha. Now, be extremely cautious. This creature packs a terrifying bite. Its force is almost 30 times the piranha's weight. And on average, this creature weighed 20 to 30 pounds. For comparison, its modern version doesn't grow heavier than 2 pounds. 
The mega piranha lived 6 to 10 million years ago in South America. Well, too long ago and too far away from your home. You sit down on the ground farther away from the river and begin to wait. Sooner or later, there will be the already familiar boom and the darkness. It'll mean your adventures will continue. Then you remember that strange-tasting burrito you had for dinner last night. Could there be some connection? You know, when someone says dinosaur, a picture of a giant scary monster mostly pops up in our brain. Even their name means terrible lizard in Greek. Yup, some of them definitely incited fear and trembling whenever they went. But not all dinos that used to walk, fly, or swim were gigantic. Plenty of them weighed less than 130 pounds. Some were the size of today's pigeons. Mouse, fox, deer, giraffe, elephant, whale… Modern animals come in different sizes. But out of around 700 known dinosaur species, there's a big gap between gigantic and those smaller ones. No middle-sized dinos documented or found. Big carnivores such as T-Rex ruled the Earth. Smaller dinosaurs could hide when they saw them coming, but middle ones wouldn't stand a chance. Even if they somehow managed to run away, the juveniles of these biggest predators would come after them. These dino teens acted like a species of their own. As they were growing up, they would get their predatory features, but they were still strong enough to catch middle-sized adults of some other dinosaur species. Teenage T-Rex, for instance, was much slenderer than its parents, but also got those fearsome teeth and powerful tail we'd be afraid of at a pretty early age. Yow! Herbivores grew so big because they were, well, quite greedy. These dinosaurs could eat enormous amounts of food in a very short time. Sometimes they would even swallow whole branches so quickly they didn't even have time to chew. Since they didn't have sharp teeth like carnivores, evolution had to give them something else for protection. Things like horns and spikes. But also, carnivores were smaller, which is another reason they had carried on for so long and managed to survive. The smallest dinosaur skeleton found was called mouse lizard. Go ahead, try to eat that one, T-Rex. You'd have to find it first. Scientists used to believe birds evolved from meat-eating dinosaurs called theropods. That's the group where T-Rex belongs to. But later, they found birds evolved from smaller species from that group. Whew, we really got lucky there. Dinosaurs mostly hatch from eggs, like birds. Even when they classify dinos, scientists don't divide them into plant or meat-eaters. They say there are two groups, one that had lizard-like hips and the other with bird-like hips. The oldest fossilized bird dates back 150 million years. Those birds even kind of looked like smaller feathered dinosaurs. They had sharp teeth, but again, luckily, they lost them and later evolved beaks. Picture if they didn't. Today, toothy pigeons would be chasing us around. Okay, take it easy, buddy. Not so funny anymore. So, speaking of small feathery creatures, T-Rex was also one of them. Yeah, hard to picture it, but even the tyrant lizard king wasn't always that scary. In the early stages, T-Rex was just a fuzzy ball, big as an average-sized turkey. Juveniles were small and weak. Predators, sickness, lack of food, all these things would sometimes be too much to fight after getting out of the egg. So, small, fluffy T-balls only had 40% chance to survive to their first birthday. Bam! The asteroid hit the Earth. The big space rock was the size of Mount Everest, and it traveled at 45,000 miles per hour. After it entered the gravity in Earth's atmosphere, it turned into a fireball. Dinosaurs were spread all over seven continents, even Antarctica. True, Antarctica wasn't covered in snow those days. Poles had rich forests growing there. Not only dinosaurs went extinct at that point, but around 75% of all animals that lived on Earth. When the asteroid hit, it made a large crater where this huge heat wave and blast wave went out, throwing enormous amounts of matter into the atmosphere. The suit in the air didn't completely block out the sunlight, but it was seriously reduced anyway. Without light, plants didn't have conditions for normal growth. That way, fewer herbivores could survive, which meant less food for carnivores. The whole ecosystem started collapsing like dominoes. Dinosaurs have been gone for the past 65 million years, but their family trees have stretched back 165 million years, way more than the human ones. But not all dinosaur species lived at the same time. Fossils are the only way we ever got a chance to meet dinosaurs. Our age never actually mingled with the era of these magnificent beasts, since some form of humans were only here 6 million years ago. More modern humans that we can closely relate to walked the Earth roughly 200,000 years ago. Some species did see dinosaurs, though, like green sea turtles. These fellas have been here for so long, 
I guess they really have lots of cool stories to share. And not just them. Bees, starfish, lobsters, crocodiles, snakes, sharks, horseshoe crabs, cockroaches, and many others were also there to see the dinosaurs rise and fall. Dinos mostly had pretty small brains, like me. For example, Stegosaurus had the brain the size of a walnut and could grow up to 21 feet. Hmm, no jokes here, since good old Stegosaurus had some other impressive features, such as those huge upright plates on its back. Yep, those could reach up to 30 inches in length and are something we all recognize this dino for. Scientists are still not quite sure what these plates were for. Perhaps for regulating blood flow and, by that, controlling Stegosaurus's body temperature. The plate system might even control their skin color, which came in handy if they wanted to scare off predators or attract potential mates. Trudon had a bit more than a walnut in its head, a body more than 6 feet long, a brain the size of today's birds or mammals, great hunter, stereoscopic vision. It was also one of the first dinosaurs discovered in North America. T-Rex is the most famous dino and one of the first ones we think of when someone mentions big lizards. But it wasn't even on the list of the 15 biggest in the whole group. Argentinosaurus was the biggest dinosaur and the biggest land animal ever found. 100 feet long, 75 tons. Wow, this one really made the ground shake. So if dinosaurs were alive in our age and you were on the sixth floor casually watching TV and chilling and suddenly seeing the head peeking in on you through your window, yup, that would be Argentinosaurus. That wouldn't be such a big problem since this giant was a plant eater. So it would probably wait for you to throw out some fruits or vegetables from your fridge. Now, considering its size, you need to have around 1,500 to 2,000 pounds of plants. Phew, triffle, who doesn't have that in the fridge? Plesiosaurus was a marine reptile that lived in the dinosaur era and went extinct almost as they did. Hmm, I think I'd rather face T-Rex than this one. Dinosaurs ruled the land where you can at least take shelter, I guess. But Plesiosaurus ruled the waters, and you got nowhere to hide there. This giant would propel itself through the water with its enormously strong, paddle-like flippers. They'd move the animal up and down, sort of like bird's wings. So, if we'd give away some titles, this one, Sujausaurus, would be promoted to the weirdo of the dino group. It looked like a huge rat with a very furry body. Its look suggests it could be related to today's ground sloth. For a long time, scientists thought dinosaurs were cold-blooded, like lizards, snakes, and other reptiles. Later on, another research came in, and it turned out they were more of warm-blooded animals, something like mammals. In 2014, scientists finally settled that dinosaurs were mostly mesotherms. That means they were somewhere in between. Scientists observed fossils found in ancient rocks to find out when some animal lived and how it behaved. Most of the fossils found were from dinosaurs that lived near water. Water covers their remains with mud, keeping them buried deep below. Not many fossils have been found in mountains or deep in jungles. Even before dinosaurs, there were some pretty scary reptiles. Ruling lizards, archosaurs, mammal-like reptiles, therapsids, and pelicosaurs. Around 20 million years after dinosaurs appeared and evolved, one of the most dangerous reptiles was still out there, the prehistoric crocodile. A couple of million years more were supposed to go for dinosaurs to truly start their reign. No one ever discovered what kinds of sounds dinosaurs really made. In movies, people mix various sounds some of today's animals produce. For instance, T-Rex had a roar that was a combination of a tiger's snarl, the squealing of a baby elephant, and an alligator's croak. And its breathing was the sound of air going through the whale's blowhole. Same with their color. People mostly think dinosaurs were grayish-green because that's how they show them in movies, as some sort of big lizards. Their color still remains a mystery, but recent research has shown pigments some species had, with one in particular having white and orange rings on its tail. How cool! Boom! An explosion of supersonic waves, interplanetary heat, dust, fumes. The Earth's atmosphere has been invaded by a cosmic rock the size of Everest. A few seconds ago, this rock, weighing trillions of tons, was hurtling towards Earth. It could fly from New York to Anchorage faster than you could fry yourself an omelet. This monster's name? The Chicxulub Incident. Epic name, right? 66 million years ago, it crashed into the Earth. Back then, dinosaurs ruled the planet, but not for long. The epic collision took place in modern Mexico, in the Yucatan Peninsula right near Cancun where the dinosaurs were vacationing. Well, probably not. Still, the huge space rock hit the ocean, 
But even all that water couldn't stop the inevitable. The collision caused a huge amount of energy to be released. The horror on a planetary scale had begun. Imagine a mini-sun lighting up the surface of the Earth with tsunamis the height of the Statue of Liberty bursting from the epicenter of the watery impact. Hmm, not good. The blast blew through the surface of the Earth. It was as hot as an oven and burnt everything in its path. The impact provoked a colossal earthquake and serious volcanic activity. A bunch of volcanoes simultaneously released hot lava and ash into the prehistoric skies. Millions of tons of ash and soot poisoned the air. This formed a huge ash cloud in the atmosphere, which blocked out the sun's rays for several years. The long winter had begun. Only there wasn't any snow falling from the sky, but rain made of sulfuric acid. Yes, the Chicxulub incident might just be the most important thing that ever happened in the history of our planet. Even more than YouTube. Back then, there were loads of volcanic eruptions, a lot of flammable oxygen in the atmosphere, constant temperature changes. It was the perfect and worst time for all of this to go down. So, how are we so sure about all this? Well, the asteroid left an absolutely huge crater on the planet's surface. Today, this scar is hidden under the Gulf of Mexico. Scientists found a lot of places on Earth with abnormally high levels of iridium. This metal is very rare on Earth, but it's in a lot of asteroids that scientists have examined. Scientists studied some 66 million-year-old rocks. In the layers of rock, they found dust, the same dust that comes from asteroids. This could only have happened if a huge asteroid had crashed into Earth. The catastrophe led to the extinction of not only the dinosaurs, but also the asteroid. It was so hot at the point of impact part of the asteroid just disappeared. A lot of water vapor and carbon dioxide shot up into the atmosphere. But the biggest problem? Sulfur. It got kicked up by the asteroid impact and flew up into the air. These tiny sulfur particles blocked out a lot of the sun's rays. Without the sun, a lot of plants disappeared and the climate eventually got colder. The immense heat turned stones into glass. Scientists call these things tectites. The energy of the impact threw them up into the skies. After a short flight, the tectites fell down to Earth. But it wasn't pretty. Rain fell too. Only instead of drops of water, you'd have seen hot glassy fireballs. They bombarded the planet's surface for days. The tectites set fire to everything. Scientists found evidence of this all over the world, not just near the collision site. But a lot of things from back then are still a mystery. Some scientists think that Chicxulub wasn't even an asteroid. It might have been a comet. Asteroids are mostly made of stone and metal. Most often, they kind of look like a potato. A comet contains rock, metal, and ice. Comets look like dirty cosmic snowflakes, complete with ammonia, methane, and carbon dioxide. Comets sometimes come from the Oort cloud. It's a huge cloud of ice and debris around our solar system. From time to time, comets break free from the pack and head towards our Sun. According to scientists, this special comet flew right past Jupiter. The gravity of that huge planet accelerated the comet even more. It flew towards the Sun, gaining more and more speed. The comet's outer ice shield started to evaporate, and it probably gave off a lot of dust and gas, which made it look like it had a tail. The Sun's gravity eventually shattered the comet apart. One of the fragments flew through space and crashed into the Earth 66 million years ago. So, asteroid or comet? The truth is, we'll never know. What we do know is that the Earth was seriously unlucky to be in its path, and it was never the same again. The catastrophe stopped the development of 75% of life on Earth. Some bigger marine animals, like crocodiles, turtles, and fish, survived the impact. Out of all land animals, the only ones to survive were the ones that were, on average, smaller than the modern raccoon. That includes a bunch of special species of dinosaurs, the ancient ancestors of birds. Scientists believe they survived for two reasons. After the huge impact, it took a long time for plants to start growing again. And a lot of animals didn't survive. Most remaining animals didn't have enough food. But these dinosaurs had a beak. With its help, 
they could split open nuts and dig seeds out of the soil. So they survived. The second reason is that these lucky guys had bigger brains. Some people think that they were able to cooperate with each other and quickly adapt to the new conditions. Other life forms survived too. Fungi and mold survived underground and underwater. Gradually, the darkness cleared away, and ferns began to take over the lifeless landscape. After a few thousand years, forests started to reappear. The animals that survived were pretty much all inconspicuous and small creatures. They lived in burrows, safe from all that hot ash. Before the collision, mammals had lived in the shadow of dinosaurs. But with all the dinosaurs suddenly gone, things were about to change. Mammals were able to take over. They began to dominate life, at least on land. Back to the moment when everything changed. Turns out, it wasn't the size of the asteroid that made it so powerful. It was more about the angle in which it hit the Earth. If the angle of impact had been different, the dinosaurs might have even survived the catastrophe. So, what would that have looked like? Well, let's travel back. Way back. Oh no, there's a giant asteroid heading for Earth. Ah. Oh, wait, never mind, it missed. There are plenty of earthquakes, tsunamis, and volcanic eruptions every day, but dinosaurs don't mind that much. No big deal. Fast forward a few million years, and most of these ancient lizards have changed and are now unrecognizable. Thanks to a couple of ice ages, many dinosaurs are now totally covered with feathers to protect them from the cold. Mammals exist, but they're few and far between. You see a lot of bats in caves. There are tons of rat-sized rodents in the forests. During the day, they hide in the undergrowth or in burrows. At night, they go out in search of food. There are no horses, no elephants, or other large mammals. Why become large and eatable when there are so many dangerous reptiles with huge fangs around? There are no whales in the sea. Parrots, hawks, and pigeons are nowhere to be seen. But pterodactyls 2.0 whiz past you constantly. Some are about the size of a helicopter, while others are no larger than a swan. There are plenty of primates, but they're in no hurry to climb down from their trees and walk on two legs. No venturing out into the savanna, no evolution into Homo sapiens. In this alternate reality, open spaces are very dangerous. But then again, so are forests and trees. Nowhere is safe. To get some delicious primate treats, many smaller dinosaurs learned to climb trees. This was already happening back in the Cretaceous period, right before that huge asteroid just missed Earth. Whew! That would have been an epic collision. Dinosaurs have grown wiser since that near miss. Some are even as smart as a modern chicken. A large brain uses a lot of energy, and that's not always a good strategy for survival. Safer to keep brains small and keep making those teeth bigger and pointier. So your starship is flying through space at 99.9% of the speed of light. Hey, aren't you cool? The stars turn into bright, continuous lines. Infinite outer space has shrunk into a tunnel. A bright flash ahead. Boom! Starship shoots out of the tunnel like a cork. You see the ancient Earth. The computer says you went back 70 million years. You're a paleontologist of the future who traveled through time for one purpose – to see with your own eyes the most underappreciated dinosaur in history. You have come down to Earth and are walking through the jungle. Suddenly, you hear a mighty roar. There's a dinosaur coming out of the trees. It's more than twice your height and weighs as much as four cars. Scientists have found only two huge arms left of this dino. For 60 years, Dinochirus has been a major mystery in paleontology. Now we can see this creature in its entirety. They managed to find a complete set of fossils in Mongolia. Translated from Latin, the name of this dinosaur means terrible hand. Apparently, this dino was lousy at playing poker. Dinochirus is an animal cocktail that nature has prepared to make you both shriek and laugh. Let's take a look at it from the point of view of the evolution itself. First, we take the T-Rex. Dinochirus and the king of the dinosaurs are about the same size. From the T-Rex, we'll only leave the powerful hind legs and the long tail. Instead of small forelimbs, we'll attach mighty 8 feet long arms. And let's not forget about the fingers with razor-sharp claws. Each claw is as long as a kitchen knife. Then we add a hump like a camel's, a neck like an ostrich's, and a horse's head. And instead of a toothy mouth, we put a duckbill. 
Now, our Dinochirus is ready. It also has long and sharp claws on its flat feet. Such broad soles help it walk along the river bottom and not sink into the silt. Most scientists believe it was covered in feathers, too. Plants were the main dish on this dinosaur's menu. To digest plant food, Dinochirus swallowed stones. Many modern birds do the same. Stones in the stomach grind the tough plant fibers. In one of the Dinochiruses, scientists found 1,400 of those. Yes, this dino had a huge belly, which slowed it down a lot. With such a size, Dinochirus lived for a very long time – 75 to 300 years, give or take. In a 100-million-year-old piece of amber, they found strange bones. They belong to the smallest dinosaur known to science. Take two paper bills from your wallet. This dino weighed the same. It was about the size of a modern hummingbird. Scientists don't know what the tiny dinosaur looked like more – a lizard or a bird. But they're pretty sure it could fly and hunted insects. Over 100 sharp teeth confirm that. What happens when you cross a chicken and a crocodile? You get one of these bad guys, a Hesperonychus. This dinosaur was small but had quite an attitude. It lived in North America and probably hunted mammals. It weighed only 4 pounds and was covered in feathers like a chicken. If the sloth was a dinosaur, it would look like a Sujo lizard. It moved on two legs, was as tall as a modern giraffe, but weighed three times as much. Sujo lizard had feathers on its body, and a long neck helped it look in all directions. Overall, the tail of this dinosaur made it look like a giant rat on two legs. When scientists first saw the fossils of this animal, they didn't believe they were real. The Hulskoraptor looks like a hybrid of a Velociraptor and an ostrich. Only this dino was the size of a goose. The creature's strong hind limbs confirmed that it could walk on land. The dinosaur hunted fish, diving underwater for its prey. Now, we're used to flying animals having two wings, but evolution loves to break the rules. The Microraptor had four wings. Strong feathers were attached to each of those. The dinosaur weighed no more than two pounds. Its feathers were black and shiny like a crow's. There are no birds on the planet that have four wings. That means they evolved from two-winged dinosaurs. Microraptor was the dead-end branch of evolution that didn't give way to any new species of animals. It seems that this hard-to-pronounce guy – I'll give it a shot – Tanistrophus, was a dinosaur drawn for a cartoon. But it existed in reality and lived in the water. It weighed 300 pounds and was 20 feet long. Half of its body was a flexible neck the size of a green anaconda. Scientists don't know why the creature had such a long neck. Most likely, the dinosaur used it to catch fish or play jump rope. Imagine that 66 million years ago – I wasn't around then – an asteroid didn't crash into our planet. The dinosaurs didn't disappear, and the mammals failed to dominate the Earth. This means the primates didn't evolve and remained in the trees. Who would have taken the place of primates in such a world? Many scientists believe it could be Troodon. The dinosaur had the largest brain relative to body size. It walked on two legs and was about the size of a human. Hypothetically, Troodon could evolve and become as intelligent as we humans are now. By the way, the smallest brain relative to body size belongs to Stegosaurus. It was the largest of the armored dinos. It was a plant eater, but its powerful tail and sharp spikes were feared by all hunters of the age. A Stegosaurus weighed almost 4 tons, but its brain was… meh, not much larger than a hot dog. Pagomastax was no bigger than a domestic cat, and it ran wild and free in Africa 100 to 200 million years ago. Imagine a bipedal lizard that looks like a parrot. Pagomastax was covered both with feathers and porcupine-like quills. It had a beak, but two sharp fangs grew from the lower jaw. Still, the creature's scary appearance is deceiving. The dino ran fast and could bite hard, but it was a peaceful plant eater all the same. Now, this one, Lenhenicus, lived 80 million years ago. It resembled an ostrich that weighed like a medium-sized parrot. It could run quickly and hunted insects. Instead of arms, this dinosaur grew two tiny fingers with claws on their ends. It's the only one-fingered dinosaur known to science. This strange creature was one of the ancestors of modern birds. J. Holopterus was a flying dinosaur, looking as if it came straight from a sci-fi movie. It looked like a cat with bat wings. The creature was feeding on insects, but there's another theory that it could feed like a mosquito. This dino landed on the backs of large dinosaurs and pierced their thick skin with sharp fangs. Now, this is a fairy tale unicorn. It's as white as snow, beautiful and graceful. And this is a Qingdao lizard, the real-life prototype of that horned horse. 
a bony horn more than 15 inches long grew on its head. Perhaps the horn helped float in the water, attract partners, or make different sounds. The fairy tale unicorn is definitely cuter than this prehistoric creature. Our next guy, Inostrancevia, resembled a cross between a lizard and a tiger. Imagine an animal that weighs as much as five wild boars with the body length of a sedan. Limbs with sharp claws, fangs similar to those of a saber-toothed tiger, and powerful jaws. It was one of the most dangerous animals that roamed the planet Earth. It occupied a niche that today belongs to lions, tigers, and other large cats. Next, please. Epidexiturus. Now, this is a small dinosaur about the size of a pigeon. It couldn't fly, but it was one of the first dinos with feathers. They were different from those of modern birds, though. They weren't divided into separate threads, but were whole and resembled plant leaves. This big guy, Therizinosaurus, isn't only known for its strange appearance and size. Although it was as tall as a five-story building and weighed like an elephant, the giant was notorious for the largest claws on the planet. It was really a manicurist nightmare. Two-inch-long scythes protruded from its fingers. Despite those horrific appendages, it ate plant food, chewing it with its small teeth. The humongous jaws were needed to pull leaves off of tall trees. Ouch! Hey, I'm growing here! Meet the largest animal that flew in the earthly sky, Quetzalcoatlus. Just imagine a creature with a wingspan almost the width of a basketball court. To lift such a machine, it needed to be lightweight, so it only weighed as much as a modern pig, with its wings looking like a thin membrane. They stretch from the bottom of the legs to the elongated fingers. Artists often depict this creature covered in feathers, but its body was actually coated with fibers similar to human and animal hair. Acrotholus is an unusual dinosaur that wore a cap made of hard bone. No, not a baseball cap. The creature was the size of a Labrador Retriever dog, but not as friendly. It wouldn't run after a stick. Rather, it would rush and ram its hard head into the rival of the same species or a predator. Alright, check this out. Water boils faster when you add a bit of salt. Myth. It doesn't make any difference, and even if it does, it may take longer for the water to boil. But it might make your pasta taste better. <laughs> Just saying. Bats are blind. Mm-mm, not true. The myth probably comes from the fact that they're nocturnal creatures and have extraordinary hearing abilities. They chase mostly when it's dark and rely on a thing called echolocation. But it doesn't mean they're blind. Their eyes aren't useless. They're just adjusted to low light conditions. A blue whale is so big, its tongue can weigh as much as a big elephant. True. Yep, these fellas are huge. You lose more heat through your head. Nah. The real reason why people believe it is because when it's cold, our head is the only part we're most likely to keep uncovered. If we went outside wearing just a t-shirt, we'd lose heat through our arms, not to mention legs, hips, and other parts. So wear a hat, guys. Tongue Map says we have different parts for different tastes. Mm, not really. There are individual taste buds that sense certain flavors more than they do with others. But it doesn't mean one area can taste sweet better than the other. Studies showed all mouth areas have taste buds sensitive to all tastes. Hey, check out this tongue map for the blue whale! <laughs> Looks like she's partial to plankton. Dinosaurs were giant. Well, that's false. Movies show them as huge scaly lizards, but nope. First off, there were many smaller dinosaur species, and some of them were as small as a turkey or a pigeon. Plus, some dinos, like T-Rex, were even covered with feathers, especially at the early stages of their lives. Oxygen is colorless. Partially true. In gas form, it has no color, but in solid or liquid form, it has a sky-blue shade. Chameleons change color because they want to match their surroundings. Myth. That would probably be a very tiring thing to do. In reality, some other things, like mood, temperature, or the amount of light they get, affect their color. When chameleons relax and stretch cells, crystals that are inside of them are affected by the light. These animals use crystals to communicate with each other. So, for example, darker shades show that they're not in such a good mood. It's more like they kind of feel aggressive. So I think I'll back off here. Neanderthals aren't our ancestors either, even though they lived with modern humans at the same time at one point, but mostly in different areas of our planet. So they're not just a stage of human development, but a different lineage. They were also pretty creative. They used fire, made tools, ate medicinal plants, cleaned their teeth, and so many more things similar to our species. Neanderthals probably went extinct because of harsh climate changes. Turkeys can blush. <laughs> that one is true. 
They're just like us when it comes to this. When angry, excited, or even feeling bad, the skin on their necks and heads turns red. (laughs) Just like my big brother. Black holes are not really holes, as the name may imply. They are very dense objects with an extremely strong gravitational pull. Flamingos are such cool animals. True. They bend their legs at the knee. Myth. They actually bend them at the ankles, since the knees are closer to the body as well as covered in feathers. Supermarket apples are fresh. Eh, Maybe yes, but maybe not. They can be up to one year old, since they're often picked between August and November. After that, they're covered in wax and dried in hot air. Finally, they're sent into cold storage, and after 6 to 12 months, we see them on the supermarket shelves. Bottled water has an expiration date? True. But that doesn't mean the water is the thing that expires. The bottle does. The plastic starts to leak into the water and some unwanted chemicals appear. The tea bag wasn't actually planned. True. In the early 20th century, Thomas Sullivan filled small silken bags with samples of tea leaves and sent them to his customers. The idea was to open them and toss tea leaves in the hot water. Many customers thought they were supposed to put those bags into the teapot without opening them. The tea bag went through some improvements, got string and a paper tag at the end, and the new unplanned invention was ready. Lightning will never strike the same spot twice. Mm-mm, not true. The Empire State Building was once struck eight times in only 24 minutes. There was a terrible storm, and nothing could or can generally keep lightning away from the place that got hit. If a struck place has features that attracted the lightning in the first place, like terrain shape, standing water, or height, it may attract it once again. You have so much DNA in your body that you can actually stretch it from the sun to Pluto and back. True. And not just once, 17 times. Of course, you're not going to look the same after you do that. Crocodiles are one of the oldest species in the world. Yup. They have been around for 200 million years already like my neighbors down the street. Opossums sleep while hanging by their tails. You can see that in cartoons and some photos, but in general, they don't. Their tails are really strong, so these animals can grip branches and hold their weight, but only for short periods. Adults are really too heavy to stay in this position for too long, so they wouldn't get much rest. Goldfish have a 3 second long memory. Nope. Those colorful fish are actually really smart. One study showed goldfish could tell the difference between two classical songs. They're not quick learners, true, but after over 100 sessions, they did it, which wouldn't be possible if their memory could really last only for 3 seconds. One type of salamander, um, you can read that on your own, go ahead, can extend its tongue over half of its body length in only 7 milliseconds. True. That's 50 times faster than a blink of an eye. Who gotta be fast to catch that tongue map. People can multitask. Not true. Checking emails, talking on the phone, cooking… It seems like doing several things at the same time saves time, but research shows multitasking is not quite possible. Our brain is wired to do one thing at a time. So when we think we're multitasking, it's actually switching tasks, which can take even longer rather than saving us some time. As well as whittling down our attention spans. Earth is not the only planet with water. NASA discovered Jupiter had an ocean with twice as much water as we have on our planet. It's right under a layer of ice. Even Mars has some liquid water flowing. Also, the Earth is round. Or is it? Technically, it has flattened poles, together with a bulge at the equator. That way, it has an irregular shape of an ellipsoid. Zombies are not made up. True. Okay, humans can't turn into ones as we see in movies. But the animal kingdom has its zombies. For instance, there's a type of fungus that takes over ants, spreading specific chemicals in their brains. That makes an ant leave its family, looking for the place where this fungus wants to live. The world's biggest waterfall is under the ocean. Oh, very true! It's in the Nordic seas. The cold seawater is denser than the warm waterfall. The drop is almost 2 miles long. The smallest wasp in the world is not bigger than an amoeba. True. This wasp has the same body parts as other bugs, like eyes, wings, brain, legs, and more, but it's just 0.008 inches long, which, in most cases, makes it smaller than one-celled organisms we also know as amoebas. Snow can only be white. Not true. And I'm not talking about the snow near fire hydrants. For example, there are some mountains with pink snow, like the Sierra Nevada in California. 
Its color is caused by a certain type of algae living there. Aurora borealis has a sister. True. It's called Aurora australis, and you can see it in the southern hemisphere. The best time to see it is in winter. Over 99% of atoms is empty space. True. If we collected all the people in the world together and removed all the empty space between the atoms out of them, the population of Earth would fit into the size of an average orange. I think we should try that. Then I could finally get a seat on the bus. Dolphins communicate and call each other by names. True. They use specific vocal whistles to identify each other. So long and thanks for all the fish. The toilet flushes in different directions when on different hemispheres. Nope. The direction is the same whether the toilet is in Australia or France. Really? A snail can have a pretty extended nap. True. Some snails can sleep for around three years in a row. Sharks smell just one tiny drop of blood from miles away. Eh, not quite. Sure, their brain region in charge of smelling odors is enlarged, but the ocean is really big. Plus, it takes time for odor molecules to spread in liquid. On a pretty good day with favorable currents, a shark may smell the prey from a distance of a couple of football fields away, but not miles. Finally, penguins propose to their significant other. True. They're monogamous, and after choosing a mate, the male gives the female a pebble to show his affection. Ah. Hello, and welcome to the fight of the century! Today in our ring is Tyrannosaurus Rex, the king of all dinosaurs that lived on Earth about 70 million years ago. T-Rex was one of the largest terrestrial predators ever existed. Even its name, Rex, means a king. And a round of applause for its opponent, Spinosaurus, a large lizard-like dinosaur that's 20 million years older than T-Rex. It can be recognized by the sail on its back. With its help, Spinosaurus could scare away predators and appear even larger than it actually was. And with that sail and tail, it was one of the few dinosaurs that could swim. We'll have five rounds plus a bonus round. The challengers will get one point for each round, and then they will step into the ring for a final battle. The first round is size. The biggest individual of T-Rexes was Scotty. Its legs alone were taller than a basketball hoop. And if T-Rex straightened its back, it would be taller than a four-story building, bigger than the tallest diving board at the Olympics. It's the height of almost seven adults. Its feet left footprints on the ground the size of a large dog. And although its forelimbs were only three and a half feet long, T-Rex remained the most dangerous dinosaur of its time. Spinosaurus walked and ran, leaning toward the ground. It was longer than a school bus. Its skull was one of the largest of any dinosaur that ever existed and looked like the skull of a modern crocodile. It was up to five feet long. Spinosaurus had a sail on its back the size of an adult human. Its hind legs were much smaller than those of T-Rex and were only 25% of the length of the entire Spinosaurus body. Its tail was elongated and more massive than that of T-Rex because of the tilted gait. The long tail at the back had to balance the heavy body in front. So, Spinosaurus was bigger than T-Rex, and the first point goes to it. 1 to 0. Moving on to the next category, weight. No, I mean how heavy. If we put T-Rex on one scale, we would need at least four big SUVs to balance it out. 14 tons. The heaviest land animal is the African elephant, but it loses to the ancient dinosaur twice. But for its bones, the weight could have been even greater. They were hollow, so T-Rex could stay fast and agile. Otherwise, it would be almost twice as heavy and way slower. When Spinosaurus ran after its prey, it caused a small earthquake. Its weight was one SUV more than T-Rex's, about 18 tons in total. And just like T-Rex, Spinosaurus had hollow bones, but it was still heavier than a large cargo helicopter. So in this round, Spinosaurus wins again, and the score is now 2 to nothing. And the next round is agility. Spinosaurus's top speed was about 21 miles per hour. In general, modern dogs can run at this speed. The fastest man in the world, Usain Bolt, can reach speeds of 27 miles per hour. So, Spinosaurus could catch up with him over a long distance. But Spinosaurus was also one of the few dinosaurs that could swim. This gave it the ability to eat fish and the ancestors of modern stingrays. And if Spinosaurus was cornered by other predators, it could always escape and hide in the water. At the same time, T-Rex could only walk on the water as deep as its legs would allow. Scientists argue how fast T-Rex could run. Some say it was 11 miles per hour. In that case, Usain Bolt could easily run away from it. 
another estimate is 45 miles per hour. At that speed, T-Rex could get from New York to Philadelphia in about two hours. It was as fast as a modern car. If you met a T-Rex in a safari jeep, chances are you wouldn't escape from it. Also, T-Rex was very maneuverable. It used its tail to keep its balance. And by turning its tail, it could turn and change direction very quickly. For that speed and agility, T-Rex gets its first score, 2 to 1, in favor of Spinosaurus. And we move on. Strategy. The strategy of Spinosaurus is hard to determine because of the variety of its food. It's somewhat similar to grizzly bears. Spinosaurus mostly fed on fish, and it got its food by grabbing small fish, rays, and other marine animals. Scientists claim Spinosaurus was highly intelligent because it would often eat things it was unable to get on its own. Yes, these dinos waited until some larger predators had finished their meal and feasted on leftovers. Something we still do at my house on Tuesday nights. The main tool of Tyrannosaurus was the jaw. It had the power of a crocodile's bite. That means it could easily break even very large bones. And you wouldn't be safe even if you were sitting in a car. That's enough bite force to bend metal. The second technique of T-Rex was ramming. Imagine a big truck coming at you at high speed. Such a battering ram could take down even a brick wall. Besides that, it had powerful limbs and a tail. It used them to knock the opponents off their feet and then hold them motionless on the ground. So T-Rex was a more brutal and capable fighter. It gets a point for that, and the score becomes tied 2-2. Two to two. And now, it's time for the bonus round! The Audience Choice Award. Meanwhile, dinos are having a little break. T-Rex is a true pop culture star. You may have seen it in movies, games, and even memes. Once, T-Rex's face was even on postage stamps. And the world's most famous fossils? Of course, it's T-Rex skeleton in the American Museum of Natural History. But such popularity led to many myths about it. T-Rex could see motionless objects. You couldn't get away from it by just standing still. What's more, its eyesight was 13 times better than humans. And its sense of smell was excellent. It could track you like a hound dog. Unlike T-Rex, Spinosaurus is neither a movie nor a museum star. Today, there's no complete skeleton belonging to this dinosaur. Now scientists are looking for Spinosaurus's fossils. So, in the near future, we'll probably find out how epic this guy really was. The bonus round has no effect on the score, so we're still tied 2-2. Two to two. The last round will decide everything. Come back to us! Spinosaurus used its teeth to get food. They were slightly bigger than your finger and as sharp as a needle. And there were seven of them at the very tip of the jaw. But they were too short to do any damage to big dinosaurs. The rest of the teeth were deep in the jaw and were used for chewing. Other dinosaurs feared the claws of Spinosaurus. One of his thumbs could be as long as the distance from the tips of your fingers to your elbows. And this thumb ended with a sharp, hook-shaped claw. These claws could leave a big mark on the skin of even the biggest dinosaurs. Now, let's look at the fighting tools of Spinosaurus's opponent. We know about the strength of T-Rex's bite, but it could have been even greater if their cone-shaped teeth had been stronger. They were the size of a large banana. This made them extremely sharp at the ends, but their enamel was pretty thin. Another tool were the claws. They were razor-sharp and as big as a TV remote control. And its tail was so massive that its blow could knock down even a very large dinosaur. Time to let our fighters back into the ring! During the break, T-Rex chased a small dinosaur and ran out to the coast. Spinosaurus was waiting in the water looking for some snack. T-Rex rushes forward first. It reaches its maximum speed and tries to use its battering ram. But Spinosaurus manages to bounce aside. Agile T-Rex turns around quickly and knocks Spinosaurus off its feet with its massive tail. Then it tries to crush it with its foot. But Spinosaurus begins to swing its limbs around and scratches T-Rex. This gives it time to get on its feet. But in the next second, T-Rex bites it hard. Spinosaurus decides to retreat towards the water. T-Rex chases it until it's up to its neck in the water. It can't chase it any longer because it's not that good at swimming. Spinosaurus doesn't want to continue the fight and swims away to a safer place. And T-Rex wins this fight and takes the title of champion of all land dinosaurs. Are we off? Okay. Whew. Good thing the folks at home can't smell this. These guys stink. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.